Okay, so in this tutorial, we're going to use a program called Rename. And Rename is something you can use for bulk file renaming. It's made with Perl, so you have all the wonderful goodness of PCRE baked right in. And that stands for Perl Compatible Regular Expressions. Um, in this case, I had a bunch of MP3s that had some naming glitches in the files, and I wanted to correct them. Now, it's kind of a pain to do this one at a time, but da 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 da, rename to the rescue. Now, rename is usually um, provided by default in most Linux and Unix based systems, so I'm going to assume you already have it installed. And without further ado, let's dive right in. So, as you can see, I have a whole bunch of files, MP3 files, right here, and for some reason, I don't know what happened, but look at this, right at the end, there is the spaces, pretty much almost all of them. These two don't have it, but yeah, spaces, I don't like that. So what I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use rename to fix it. So th let's uh, clear that off the screen. All right, let's begin. First off, type in rename, and then followed by two single quotes. Now think of these quotes as protecting whatever's in between them. So this shell is bash, and bash, certain character combinations have special meaning, and I don't want those special meanings to goof up what I'm working on. So that's why these two single quotes will protect what's ever on in the middle. Hopefully that made sense. Okay, so first we're going to type in S, and that stands for substitution, and then we have to choose a delimiter. So I like to pick tildes, and what this represents is anything here. Think of it as like what we're searching for, the find. And anything here is like the replace, the replacement pattern. You sometimes see it like this. That's probably more popular way of writing it using this delimiter. But say, for example, you were searching for something that had a forward slash, right? Then you'd have to use a backslash in front of it to escape it. And that's just getting messy. So I like picking tildes because usually there aren't a lot of tildes and things I'm searching for. But as I said, you can choose anything you like. So as you recall, what we're trying to do is we're trying to find that, that spaces, those spaces before that MP3, right? So we can use lookarounds, which is really good. This is a positive look ahead. And we know it looks something like this. So this is an anchor, I mean, right at the end. Uh, it's gonna say MP3, and I escaped this to make it literal, so it's a literal period, because if you remember, this is a special meta character on its own, and it means pretty much anything but a new line. And we're gonna do this, that's a space, and I'm gonna say a space one or more times followed by MP3, and that should do it. Uh, this is a type of quantifier, it's an iterator, this just means one, or, and there's, you could give it a number as well, but I didn't give it a number, so it means one or more times. You could have also wrote it like this as well, I guess. Maybe that's a little easier. And there we go. So that's this part of it is done. This should do it. So it's going to find any spaces one or more times that's followed by this MP3 here. And it's going to replace it with nothing. So it's just going to get rid of the whole thing. Now we have to give it some files, some input. So it's looking for this argument here. So I'm going to say a wild card. So all of the MP3s in the, in the, in the folder. All right, let's see what happened. Yep, it seemed to work. As you can see now, there's no spaces anywhere with any of the files. So wonderful. First step worked good. Love it. Okay, so one more example. Let's do this again. And you'll notice there's all these spaces, right? Now, spaces don't play very nice in the command line. And I'll give you an example of it. So say, for example, I was doing something like this. As you can see, look at that. You got to escape all the spaces. So what I want is I want underscores. Underscores, underscores, underscores. So let's do something with rename again. And we're going to give all, we're going to turn all these spaces into underscores. So. Once again, the single quotes, the S, I'm going to choose this as my delimiter. I'm going to go for all the MP3s. Now, I'm going to add a modifier this time, the G modifier, which means global. So 
And we're going to go, anytime there's a space, replace it with a underscore. If I didn't do this global modifier, what would happen was it would only replace the first occurrence of it. And I can prove that by doing this, like that. And as you can see, only the first occurrence of the space got replaced. The rest of it is still, you see, still spaces everywhere. So let's try that again. Put in the global modifier, press return, and ta-da, look at that. Now if I was to do this, easy breezy. And there we go, not bad, not bad at all. So that was an example of rename. If you're interested in regular expressions and want to learn more, I launched a free Udemy course called Regex Academy. I'll put the link in the description below. Pretty much it's totally for free. It's only an hour and will give you a really good strong foundation in using regular expressions. What I plan on doing is I plan on launching hopefully rather frequently, uh, just different little examples, practical examples of what you can do with regular expressions. And if you have any suggestions of things you'd like to see, please leave it in the comments below. And thank you for watching.